Good morning. Hello, hello. How are you guys? I'm always lifting my hands when we first start. How is everyone doing this morning? If you can hear me, just go ahead and let me know. That way I can get started. That's always like my first thing that I want to ask and make sure that the volume is good. I hope everyone is doing well. It is very cool here today in Florida. Oh my gosh, guys. It's like 34 degrees or something like that. It's super cold, but not like snowing or anything like that. Just really cool. Very cool, especially for Florida. I see some people in the chat. So if you're there, just let me know if you can hear me. And then I want to go ahead and get started. Hey, Helen, good morning. Sounds good. Okay, great, great, great. It's cold there. Hey, Nana's hands, good morning. How are you? I know it is Tuesday, December the 1st. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I'm I'm so ready for this year to end, but I can't believe that it's already December, if that makes any sense at all, because oh, this has been the most exhausting year. <laughs> the most. Oh my gosh. You guys, I'm not, you know me, I'm going to try to keep your time. I know everyone's time is valuable. And actually, we're going to be talking about time today and how we can um, effectively manage our time. So I want to kind of keep on that, especially if you're catching the replay. I don't want to just be hanging out. You guys are here watching me after the after um, the live goes going. So I want to just start by welcoming anyone that's here that has not joined me before. My name is Felicia. My channel name here on YouTube is also Ann, and I do crochet videos. I do tutorials from a beginner perspective. I usually do yarn reviews. I do some giveaways, and in the spring and the summer, sometimes I do a little bit of plant life. Not a lot, but just enough that, you know, kind of keeps me accountable for my plants that I absolutely love to do. I love gardening and things like that. So I do have a little bit of that on my channel. I am I'm currently trying to grow my um, Instagram, so if you are on Instagram, please follow me over on also and underscore underscore crochets. So that's just another place that we can kind of connect and it's a little bit more real time if you have questions about anything because I do do tutorials um, and I try to think about my beginners. If you hit me over on Instagram, sometimes I'm a little bit more quicker to respond, you know? Good morning, Verna, how are you? Hi, Dawn, how are you doing? I'm doing well, I really am. You're blessed, <laughs> so blessed. Oh God, thank, yes, yes, I'm so, yes. This has been one of those years. It's very cold in Fort Walton Beach. Is it really? It's cold? Gosh, Lee. I was on someone's live last night, um, Dana's live last night, and there was someone in there that was from Pensacola, and she said that it was super cold in Pensacola as well. So, yeah, Nan, I knew what you meant. <laughs> God, it's been so good. Okay, guys, so you know me. I like to start by... Um, Thanking the people that came through on my replay. So a lot of times I'll get a lot of feedback on my channels and on my videos, but with the lives in particular, I'll have people that watch it. And then some people will actually comment and become engaged. And I want to shout out those people. So before we even start, I want to say thank you to Linda, be you for you, which I love that channel name. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tasha V. I couldn't pronounce your last name, but thank you so much. You engage through the entire live, and I really do appreciate it. And Vivian Crosby, thank you again for always just coming through on the replay and commenting. So, guys, if you catch this on the replay, engage with me there on the replay, too, because I will you know, respond, and I enjoy reading what you guys are thinking about, whatever the topic is that we're discussing. So last week, we really didn't do much. We just did a little bit chit-chat, but um, in previous um, lives, we've talked about you know, um, turning your hobby into income. We've talked about the imposter syndrome and what that means. So if you haven't checked out any of those, be sure to check those out because they had a lot of good content, I think, you know? Hey, Vivian, I just said thank you to you. <laughs> How are you doing? So today, guys, um, before I get started, we are going to be talking about owning your time and what that meant to me and how I came about owning my time and how I ended up becoming better at managing my time. So it wasn't like 
I'm perfect at it. And I'm always working towards getting things completed, but I had to come up with some, you know, some structure to what I wanted in my day. And so that's what we're going to discuss. But before we do that, I want to say that since this is really the season of giving, a lot of people are doing giveaways and things like that. I have joined with um, Blue Elephant. Her name is... Um, I don't want to mispronounce her name, but it's um, Shalee Ahmed, and she's with the blueelephant.com. She has teamed up with 30 other crocheters and designers, and we're doing a giveaway. It's an epic giveaway. It's going to run from December 1st through December 30th, and it's going to include crochet patterns. It's going to include a subscription to Recrochet Magazine. It's going to include a three-month subscription to you, um, to Knit Crate. So it's a really big giveaway. So I'm going to have the information about the giveaway over on my website later today, not now, but I'll have it posted later today on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do that. And I'll also have some information listed here on YouTube so that you can get more information about how you can enter it. It's a really good giveaway. And um, it's really just to celebrate the successes of us as crocheters throughout the year and want to kind of give give back to you all because we can't be successful with what we're doing if we don't have supporters and people that look out for us. So in order for us to kind of say thank you, we've all kind of teamed up and we're doing this big epic giveaway. So that is coming up. It's going to run, like I say, between today all the way to the end of the month. So you have many, many times to enter. So make sure you check out all those places to get the information about it because I don't want you to miss out. Okay. I'm just gonna check through here really quick. You're doing good. Got my hubby. Oh, good. That thing was running. Yeah, um, my mom was on dialysis for a very, very long time, and thank God we were able to get her a kidney. So I'll pray for healing for your husband because that is, that's you know, that's a lot on the family as well as on per person that's going through dialysis. So I completely get that, Vivian. Hey, be you for you. Thank you for being here too. I'm, I appreciate you being here as well. Oh my gosh. So guys, ah, let's talk about owning our time and what does that actually mean? And whew, that is, it's, it's been a long journey for me to get to a place where I feel like I have a handle on the time that I have left. So let me just say this, and I'm going to say this, um, as I'm just going to say it because I'm talking about, I'm talking to you guys, right? I feel as though time is a luxury, right? And when I, back when I first started trying to get a handle on my day, right? I would go through different people's um, spills about managing time. And they always seem to talk about time. Like it was just so everyone could just, <laughs> magically have it. And I understand that we all have 24 hours in the day. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. But the luxury of owning your own time, that to me is a luxury. Because if you work 40, 50 hours outside of the home, you have children, you have responsibilities, you have a husband, you have a dog, you have parents that need you, that is not necessarily your time, right? You're really... You're, that time is on lease to someone else and you might only have a small amount throughout the day. So I used to listen to people talk about time and they just kind of talked about it so cavalier, like everyone just, you know, you could just do this, just do it. And I'm like, just do it. I work 50 hours a week and then I come home and I work, you know, so that their um, rationale for time management wasn't really working for me, you know. Hey, good morning, Rhonda. How are you doing? From Sacramento. Wow. How's the weather over there? Is it cold? Is it cold? Yeah. Um, so that was what I always was wondering, like, how are you supposed to manage time when you work 40, 50 hours a week? Right. What are you supposed to do with the time? So it was like, while I, I understood that we all had it, how do we manage it? So what I used to do a long time ago was I used to, well, not even a long time ago, I used to just make lists. I used to make lists and it would just be long lists about what I needed to get accomplished. And it just felt like the list just kept growing. Like, does that ever happen with anyone? Like where you just feel like you're making lists, but nothing's happening with the list. It's like you're working the list, but it just, you keep, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on. And that's kind of what it felt like for me. It was like the list was just growing. And while I was getting some things accomplished off the list, it just felt like I kept adding to the back end. So 
I was like, okay, this isn't really as productive as I would like for it to be, right? I'm like, I'm making the list. I'm working things off the list slowly, but I'm still not feeling like I'm owning any of the leftover time in the day, you know? So I started like looking into, well, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get through this? You know, how am I supposed to get through my list? And I started looking to different people. Some people were saying you should work your list, work the easiest things first, right? And then you would you would feel more accomplished throughout the day. So therefore you would, you know, keep going. And then I had other people say, no, you should work the most difficult things first because in the morning you're more fresh. You can look at it with a fresh perspective and you get things completed quicker that way as well. Well, Either way I did that, it still felt like I was not managing the time that I had left, you know? So what I ended up doing was I had to start reevaluating what was really important and really what I wanted to get out of my time. So I was working full time and I was working, you know, like I say, 40, 50 hours a week. And that's the catch. When you're working so many hours throughout the week, how much left do you even really have, you know? So me and my husband came to a decision that it would be easier for me because of the career field that I was in to maybe work part-time. So work part-time in the same field and then work part-time at home because it was just, you could just tell it was just like, I wasn't managing it well at all. It was, it was just too stressful. And so when I started working part-time, I realized that I, while I had more time, at home, I still felt like I wasn't getting enough done. You know, I wasn't getting enough done. So I had to really think about this. I had to think about what was happening with my day. What was going on in my day where I wasn't able to get everything done. So the first thing I wanted to work on was, um, what always was on my list was my health and my, and working out. Hi, good morning, Knit Pearl and Squirrel with Garen Ed. How are you? Um, I had to figure out what was um, important to me. So I started working out and I started working out in the daytime. Or when I was working 40 hours and 50 hours a week, I would work out in the morning, early in the morning. And I want to tell you guys, working out in the gym early in the morning, as opposed to in the middle of the day, completely different experience. It's a completely different set of people in the gym in the middle of the day, right? So I started getting um, personal trainers coming up to me in the middle of the day. They're like, hey, you know, let me give you a personal training session. And, oh, hey, guys, (laughs) I'm just talking about time management. So I started getting... um, personal trainers coming to me and they were like, Hey, you know, let me give you a personal training session. And I guess there's like an assumption that obviously if I'm working out in the middle of the day, then I could afford personal training. That's, that was a complete assumption. So I avoided the personal trainers in the gym for a while. And then eventually I was like, okay, let me hear what you have to say. So have you guys ever gone to the gym and had a personal training session before? Like, have you ever had one of them? Uh Uh-oh. I dropped something. So basically what happens in a personal training session, um, well, what happened in mine anyway, they, they walk you around the gym and they show you how to use the equipment, not so much like all of the weight stuff, but they show you how to use the equipment. And then they want to come up with like a plan for you so that you can like not only like optimize your weight loss through exercise, but also through what you're eating. And so one of the things that the personal trainer says to me is he's like, make a list. Make a list of everything you eat for the entire day. And I heard that before, you know, and I'm like, oh, who has time to make a list? And he was serious, though. He was like, I want everything on that list, including gum. If you've eaten three three, three pieces of gum, list that down. And so I, I said, OK, I'll do it because I'm here. I am taking advantage of this free opportunity. And so I did. I listed everything that I ate in a day. Well, I tell you that to say that in order for him to figure out how to help me manage my weight, I had to, he had to see what I was doing with my day. And so 
that stuck with me, that concept of writing everything down, right? I was already making a list, but what was happening was when my husband would come home from work or my children would come home from school, it felt like I couldn't really account for the things that I had done throughout the day. You know, does that make sense? Like I was literally like, okay, I know, <laughs> I know I've been here all day long. I know I washed a load of clothes and I know I cleaned underneath the sinks and I did all the little household responsibilities, but it felt like my day, I still wasn't able to account for everything, you know? Hello, host. Hi, Caking101. How are you? <laughs> um, I've always avoided the personal training because I worry it's not really worth the added stress. Yeah, I know. And that was me too. When I was, when I went to the gym and the personal trainers were there, I would just avo would like avoid eye contact because I knew what they wanted. I was like, no, I, it's not going to be anything that I can afford. It's not anything that I want. It's elliptical. You know what I mean? So I avoided them. But when I finally did meet that part of the personal training, was I mean, it was a lot of good information. Don't I'm not downplaying personal trainers at all. I feel like they do have good worth at the gym if you are really serious. But that portion of the personal training, when he was like, write a list about everything I ate, that set with me, you know? It set with me. But let me tell you how I was able to apply it, right? So when I was working full time, 50 plus hours a week, some days I felt like I got more done on my lunch break, my one hour lunch break, than I would get done when I went part time working at home part of the day. Okay, so just remember that for, for a second. Keep that like in your back of your of your mind, right? So after I did the personal training thing and I was able to make, make a list of all the food that I ate, I understood what he wanted me to do. I got that. He couldn't fix what I was going, what I was going on with my weight if he didn't know what I was consuming. Right. So here I am working at home now part time. I got this personal trainer going thingy <laughs> and I still was not managing my time well. And my friends started saying stuff like, girl, if I was working at home part time, I would be able to get everything I wanted to get done, done. And I was like, well, why am I not? So I took that concept that I learned in that personal trainer. Hi, um, Iris, how are you? Um, self care. Yes, yeah, self care is absolutely key. I took that information and I applied it to my day when it came to my time. And I literally wrote down everything I did for that day. Like I, because when I, like I said, I couldn't be held accountable. I wasn't, I wasn't sure how to value what I was doing. When my, when my kids came home, my husband came home, I wasn't able to really clearly say like, I knew I was busy all day long. I knew I did things all day long, but you have to understand when you're polishing furniture or cleaning up the baseboards or doing little nitpicky cleaning things around the house that the house needs, you, it's not always easily seen. People can't always see when you wash the sheets or, or, you know, whatever it is. So I took the time and I literally wrote down every single thing I, um, every single thing I did for a day. And you know what I found out? You know what I found out? Hi, Ethel, Gail, and Dana, and Christy Creations. You guys, thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Jan, hi. Um, what I found out was I did a lot of like my transition from one task to the next was taking so much time, guys. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like I literally was folding clothes. It took, it doesn't take me an hour to fold clothes, but in that time frame when we folding clothes, I was watching YouTube videos. I was watching a movie. I was listening to a book on tapes. So that, hour of me folding clothes, I was like at the end of it, like maybe it took me 30 minutes to finish laundry, but I would take the last 30 minutes of that and I would finish watching my YouTube video that I was watching. Or I'd finish watching the movie that I was watching. And so in that, in my day, my time became less valuable because I was utilizing it 
in the transition from one task to the next, I was, it was just being eaten up. And so when I decided that I wanted to turn my hobby into income, I wanted to make crochet work for me a little bit more. I had to figure out how to claim back that time. Does that make sense? Like at all? <laughs> since, re since I retired, I can't accomplish anything that I did while I was working. I know. It's like the more you're home. <sighs> My mom is more busy in retirement than she was when she was working, I do believe. <laughs> She's always doing something. Um, but yeah, so once I started writing down what it was that I was doing throughout the day, I was able to see wow, there's like four hours of my day that I was literally non-productive, you know, in a real way because I was transitioning from something else to something else. I would drop my kids off to school and then I would sit in the car and finish listening to a radio program. That didn't seem too long, but I mean, if you add that 30 minutes up with the 30 minutes up that I used when I was trying to fold clothes, it took me 30 minutes to transition from folding clothes. Now I'm at an hour worth of time time that I should be valuing that I really wasn't you know <laughs> yeah it's like trans even when I'm like even with crocheting I have to remember to value my transition time too it's like moving from creating a pattern to filming a pattern to um to you know so you create it you film it you write it you have to edit your video that whole transition guys you know and if I was working on a job and I was getting paid, you know, $20 an hour, $15 an hour, whatever your hourly sal salary is, um, for every hour that I go over it, at, at a job, they would pay you overtime. But at home, you're not getting paid overtime for that. So a job, I was following the world to value my time. They, they put a monetary value on my time, but I wasn't doing the same thing. You know? Eat up way too much time if you kept a minute. I can go. Yeah, exactly. Personal entertainment, while necessary <laughs> sometimes, it can definitely eat away at your time. You know? So that is when I, I had to really pull it back together. Like I had to make it make sense. I and mean, if I was going to transition my hobby, if I was going to value my time, I realized in that moment that it had to start with the way I was thinking. It had to start with my mindset. So I've talked about this before, like your mindset when it comes to valuing yourself, valuing your work, valuing your creations. So now valuing your time, you have to change your mindset, especially for the people that want to move their hobby to income or their craft, even if you don't want it to make it income. Maybe this isn't an income-based thing for you. But even if you want to donate your stuff, you know, when I work, um, I, I work, I volunteer here in town locally with a, um, a local chapter, um, it's the junior league. And, um, in that chapter, we value our time too. Like if you, if we donate so much time to working in the community, that still translates to value. Because if you didn't, if you didn't, you know, qualify that time, you really couldn't tell people how that how your services could help them. So if we can say we spent five hundred thousand hours building a house, that all, you know, there was a value there. And so if, if community centers can do it, then we have to be able to do that as well. And like I said, even if you're just crocheting to gift to someone else, that's still value. That's still, that's still something you should value. And that, that time component has to be valued. Because if you if your whole give back is I want to create 15,000 hats or 10 hats or 20 hats or whatever it is, you have to put some type of value on that so that you can get so many of those completed. I hope that makes it some kind of sense. <laughs> we have to also consider how super stressed we are with COVID. I feel that I eat more comfort foods. Yeah, it's trying to stay focused with that life. Exactly. I mean, COVID is a whole nother, you know, that's a whole nother part of it. It's just, cra it's crazy what we have to, 
mentally think about, you know, going out, just the regular transitioning from getting food coming in, you know. So once I started writing everything down, kind of staying back on my topic, I was able to really see where I was missing the mark, where I wasn't really valuing my time, right? Um, let's take it back one more second. Like, remember like when I was telling you before, when you work, if I was talking from an hourly perspective, when I used to work in, a, in, in an hourly perspective, anytime I worked over, the job usually would pay you time and a half or they would pay you over to time. If you worked over your set 40 hours a week, which if you notice, a lot of companies will be like, uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> it's time to go. They'll be punching their 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 wrists and saying, "Okay, it's time to clock out," because they know that the company has said that if we if we if you work twenty hours if you make twenty hours an hour and you work over that, we're going to have to pay you now half time and a half, so thirty dollars an hour. So companies have already put a value on you. It works in reverse though if you think about a salary employee or a career service employee. Say you work for a certain standard amount every year. You work for a salary. So I'll make fifty thousand dollars a year and that fifty thousand dollars is going to be based off the hours that you work for the course of the year. When you start cheating yourself and I say cheating yourself by working overtime, typically salaried employees, and this is just where I am, they don't get paid overtime. You know what I mean? You work until the job is done. So if you've been hired to typically work 40 hours a week and they're saying, okay, based off 40 hours a week and you're making X amount of dollars, you're going to make this salary. And then you start working over that. The company's not paying you time and a half. So now you take your, your salary, you're diminishing that salary because you're working more than the company's willing to pay you for. If that even makes any sense at all, you know? So you have to remember that if a company is going to put value on your time, you should be willing to do the same for yourself. And that's the key. So owning your own time. So we've talked about if I'm working for somebody else, that's not right now, that's not my time. That's their time. If I have children, that part of my life belongs, there's some time that has to be carved out for them. If you have a family, if you have a parent that you're taking care of, if you have a dog, though those hours are not necessarily yours, that is on lease to somebody else. But if, um, excuse me, but if you, let me, um, but if you, what whatever's left, that's the time that you own, right? So what I do now is, I will literally make a list. I still do my list. Write down what I want to get accomplished in the day. And then I allocate time to those things. So I'm literally saying, and this is what I have. This is what I use. It's a, it's like a hourly calendar. You guys can't, you probably can't see everything because it's in white and it's it's color blocked out. But basically, um, it has a place on one side where you can write down what you want to get accomplished during the day. And then on the other side, it's hourly blocked out. So basically it will say seven o'clock, seven thirty, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, like that. And then what I do is I go and assign what, what I'm going to do in that hour. And that has really allowed me to stay focused on keeping accountable for my time. So for instance, today, I knew I was going to spend time with you all. I was going to do my live today. So my lives are typically one hour. I usually carve out two hours for this, for my, for my, um, for my lives. I do a 30 minute block in the front of the live and I do a 30 minute block on the back side of the live. That allows me to get things set up. I like to check out Dana's live before I go live just to, you know, I love supporting her. So I go over there. I support her. Um, I will then log into my life here. I'll take my pictures, do what I have to do. And then I chat with you all. Prior to this live though, however, I have already done the work that I want to do. I want, I have my topics that I want to discuss. So that is another block out of time that I I carve in at another point. But for the live purposes, 30 minutes before, 30 minutes after. That's to kind of clean up any of my chats that I need to do, make sure that my information is plugged in. 
That's how I do that. And then from there, I will schedule the rest of my day. Now, Instagram has always been a downfall for me. And that's just me being clear and honest. I can get on Instagram and it can derail my whole day. So what I started doing is I give Instagram an hour. And I give Instagram usually an hour first thing in the morning around 8 o'clock. But it's no longer me just supporting people's content. It is now, am I lagging? It's a little grainy. It's grainy? Um, but that's now not so much for me to just go out there and look at everyone's content and get inspired and support. I now say with Instagram, you got Felicia, you have 30 minutes to support your fellow crocheters and people that you like to watch and be entertained. But you also have 30 minutes to post something about yourself. Now, this is one of my tricky ones, guys, because I'm getting used to posting on Instagram. But I feel as though if I'm going to support 30 minutes for someone else and I need to support myself for 30 minutes. So in that 30 minutes, I need to get pictures put up. I need to post a couple of times. I need to engage, things like that. You know, hey, sunshine, how are you? So I have to remember how to value the things that are important to me. You have to remember, guys, anytime you say yes to something, you're essentially saying no to something else. So if I'm saying yes to sitting around looking at my Instagram for an hour and a half, that means I'm saying no to being creative. I'm saying no to building my brand. I'm saying no to maybe exercising. You see what I'm saying? I have to remember that what is important to me, I have to give energy to, you know? So that is important. That is so important. Salary has been the worst thing to happen to my household. It used to be worth it, but there, these girls are taking advantage of some from over. Ex exactly. Okay, that's exactly it. Companies know how to squeeze the most out of us. And then what happens oftentimes, what was happening to me, I can speak for myself, I was drained at the end of the day. I literally, when I said I was sitting in my car, that was me trying to, whew, this was a long day. <laughs> and when you give so much to a company, by the time you get home, you have nothing left for your family, for your personal growth, then there's something that has to give. And I find that even what, what writing down my day, even when working, would have worked perfectly for me because then I could have really utilized those hours, I think, more efficiently. You remember when I said earlier um, I could get more done on my hour lunch break some days than I could get in, in my days that I was working from home? That's because in my hour lunch break, I literally, which I didn't realize I was doing it, but I would say, go to Publix, go pick up the dry cleaning, go here. You know, I had a list, go to the mall, do whatever I was going to do. But because I had my list and I had time blocked that list, I got everything done. You know, so I had to, I had to, I had to figure this thing out. I had to. So I, I do the same thing now. So basically, once I create my list of things that I want to do and need to get accomplished, I have like an action list. And those are the things that I have to get done. So if I know I'm going to put out a video, I know there's so many components to that that has to take place for me to put out a video. So when I, when I move that from my list of things to do to my action list, now this is all, I'm doing all of this manually. There are so many programs now, especially Google, Google Calendar, all that. I am just old school when it comes to writing things down. All of my patterns are written down. <laughs> I am just, I love pens. I love paper. So um, I'm old school about this. But I write it down and move it over. And then when I add it to my time block, I know that in that two hour time block that I gave it or an hour time block, I know everything that I have to get done for this time block. Because when that time is up, if I'm going to be efficient with my day, I've got to move to the next task, you know? And then I, you know, if I can carve some things back in later in the day, like maybe something didn't take as long as I thought, I can go back and get what I was trying to work before, if that makes sense. Because that's really how I had to keep myself accountable to, um, you know, to everything. 
I had to be. <laughs> I had to be accountable. You know what I mean? So that's what I do. And I didn't realize what this was called when I started doing it. It's called time blocking or calendar blocking. And there's a ton of information on this. I was just doing what worked for me based off of the information that I got from that personal trainer. You know, when he said, write down everything I ate, I thought that would work in, in relating to my time, write down everything you do. And that was mainly for me. So then when people came and said, what did you do today? I could say, oh yeah, I did this, I did this, I did this. And it helped me feel more accomplished with my day. It made me more accountable for my day. Um, so I don't know what, what techniques do you guys use to keep yourselves accountable for your time? Like, is there anything that you, are you doing something, some of the things that I'm doing, or you just kind of go through the day or like, how do you guys kind of stay accountable for your time? Accomplished. I can be fully on the listening to you and other YouTube channel that I watch every morning. Yeah, Vivian, she says, sitting here listening to me right now, she decided that she can get something accomplished and she started by folding laundry while listening. And I think that's exactly what we have to do. We have to kind of, in the moments that we can multitask, multitask. Like I support other YouTubers. I enjoy listening to other people's lives. And I know from a YouTube perspective that sometimes I can get engaged and I can talk and chat because I've carved out personal time. But other times it's really just me trying to support what they're doing. So I'll put their lives on and I will, they'll be in the background and I'll hear, I'll hear them, but I'm also doing something else because supporting people is also to me just as important. So, um, that's, that's what I do. Just like what you're saying, I fold and close at the same time. <laughs> God said she does nothing. She's a mess. I was you. <laughs> I know you're doing nothing. Uh, Rachel Hollis, but girl, stop apologizing. She really focused on a lot of these practices. Oh, really? Rachel Hollis, girl, stop apologizing. Hold on. I'm going to write that because I know Rachel Hollis. Now, see, if that is a book on um, audio, I can definitely um, check that out because like I said, I love, I love audio books. Um, I love them because I can, it allows me to keep my hands free while I'm working and listening. So customer yesterday, I need to make four teddy bears now. <gasps> oh, congratulations. See sunshine. And that goes towards time management too, because you got your first customer and you're now making four teddy bears. So you're going to have to make sure you stay accountable for that. So that way, whatever you're charging for your teddy bears makes sense. Because if it takes you a very long time to make the teddy bears, then it's going to squish your profits a little bit, right? So that's where time management will work for you. Hey, Pam, good morning. How are you? I know you're a busy lady too. Do you have any tips on how you stay accountable to your time? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your name. Hi, Miss, Mr. Mr. P. How are you doing? I'm just going back and make sure I didn't miss any good um, to Sean Owens. If you're still here, hello from Oklahoma. Debbie, I don't know if I spoke to you, but good morning. <laughs> I'm kind of trying to go back up. Gail, good morning. Thank you. I appreciate that. So honestly, guys, that's what I do. Like to summarize everything, that's really what I do. I just, I try to hold myself to the same account that if I were working for someone, they would hold me to account. If I go into a job and I'm working 40 hours or 40 plus hours, I have to be accountable for my day from their perspective. Just like now that I'm mostly home, I have to be accountable for my day from my perspective. If I'm going to build my brand or if I'm going to better myself or if I'm going to value my time, I have to figure out ways to do that. And so writing things down, blocking out the time to get those things accomplished, that's the best way that I know how. And when I talk about owning your time, when once you've given all that you had to give to the people that have leased your time, they're, they're, they're holding your time for you, you still have time for yourself. And so you have to figure out what it is and how that's going to look. Some people wake up early 
earlier, you know what I'm saying? Like say the early bird gets the worm, but if sometimes if you wake up earlier, that also allows you to carve in some more time in the day. Um, I work well at night, which is um, when my house seems to be the most quietest. So I carve in a lot of time in the evening for myself. And I just have to be very intentional about what I'm going to do during that time because it's so easy to get distracted. It's just so easy. And I don't want, I don't want to do that. Hey Vera, how are you? Jamie, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Do you heard Siri? Siri hears me talking and she said, good morning. <laughs> no, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Um, I, I'll, you guys, these calendars are called, um, I think they're called daily calendars or something like that. Um, I don't even know the name of them. I've just been using it for so long. And maybe it's an hourly calendar or a daily calendar, but it's worth looking into if you guys are really serious about trying to get yourselves in some kind of um, time organization structure. I'm going to leave, I'm going to say this quote that I heard from, um, I think Oprah, you guys, I think Oprah said this. If she didn't, forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> but it says a person can change their future by merely changing their attitude. A person can change their future by merely changing their attitude. And so if you change the way you perceive yourself and you and you change the way you value your own individual time, you can literally change the way you move. Perspective is so important. You know what I'm saying? I I, I don't know how else to really say that, but I mean, I feel like once you decide what you want, and then you start putting forth the effort, small steps, small steps. I've said this before because um, I read the Dave Ramsey book and it was like, how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time, one chunk at a time? That's like with everything, you know what I mean? So even when you start trying to get organized, trying to own your time, that's all small steps. But it all started for me really by just accounting for my day. Once I did that, then everything started to fall into place a little bit more and I was able to give more. It's like I had more time. It's the same analogy with the lunch break. While I'm able to get 15,000 things done on one hour lunch break, that's just because I was able to put things in time perspective and just got it done, you know? So does anybody have anything they want to add to the discussion? I just, I, I can go ramble, you know, guys, I can ramble. <laughs> I try not to be, you guys, you, if you guys have been with me from the beginning, you remember my very first live, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be on here for like 20 minutes. And ever since then, it's increasingly gotten to an hour. But um, I just enjoy talking. Okay, Logan has placed a um, link to that time, I guess, I think. Logan, is that the link to the um, calendar? I don't know. But even if you don't want to buy anything, you obviously can just write this down, you know, on a on a piece of paper or what, whatever. Ooh, I'm not advertising for them. I don't know who they are. Oh. Okay, guys. So anybody working on anything? Let me show you guys what I'm working on really quick. That's all I have for time, um, pretty much. Um, I think I'm going to do a blog post on it. So I'm going to write a blog on this. There's these, these topics that I'm discussing over the last few weeks definitely going to be a blog post because I think it's good information. I, I'm glad that I was able to share it with you all. Um, so definitely going to do that. Um, I just tapped a link and it looks okay. Cool. Okay. So that's what it is. Cool. Guys, you guys challenged me last week to make ornaments. I failed at that challenge because I don't know how to um, make things small. <laughs> I don't know how to make things really small and show you what I'm doing. That's like the um, origami type stuff. But I did make these little girls right here. They're so cute. To, they're cute. And I'm going to show you guys in a tutorial. And these are from a beginner perspective, guys. So keep in mind that these little cuties are from a beginner perspective. So when I put the video out, I'm aiming for Thursday. Um... These are um, little angels, little brown angels. Look at them, aren't they so cute? So I'm calling her Gloria because she has on white and I have her, I think she's gonna be like 
Violet or something, like the antagonist, because she's got on the red. So I'll have a tutorial for these. These are nice, about six inches. Uh, my goal was to make ornaments, but I'm going to defer you guys to Dana's channel. Dana is making really cute ornaments. And if you see this little guy right, this little thing right here, this is her pattern for the um, wreath. So I wanted to talk to her first. Dana, if you're on here still, forgive me. I wanted to tell people that to go to your channel to check this out, but I didn't see the tutorial up yet. So, but she did do this little wreath in her live, in her either yesterday live or I think it was yesterday's live. So I added her to the little angel. And um, so I will, I'm going to route people to her channel to check out the reef, but the little angel is going to be on my channel. And I'm going to do this on, I think, Thursday. And they sit because they have the little toilet paper, you know, these little things, guys. They're sitting on that. So if you ever saw my tutorial on um, candles, they're made similar to the candle so they can add to that whole crochet motif. Or whatever but I just think she's so cute and I put lashes on her and stuff <laughs> so anyway these are coming up on my channel guys so make sure you check those out and I hope that I taught it in a way that you guys can um, understand what I'm doing thank you Pam <laughs> these are these were cute and they're fun to make so that's what's coming up on my channel I made some little um some little, I'm, I'm trying to do little quick gift ideals. There is a thing on YouTube called Vlogmas. And basically that means you vlog every single day in December. I will not be vlogging every single day in December because um, vlogging for me is, um, that's, I'm not there yet. Live is the closest I've gotten to vlogging. So I won't be doing vlogmas, but I hope to be putting out a bunch of content between now and the end of the month, at least now into Christmas, so that you guys can have like quick crochet ideals, you know, my contribution to vlogmas in the way that I can do it. Um, so can you please give me a shout out? Mankind Gaming. That's your shout out. Thank you for watching today, Mankind Gaming. Um, this in my cup is just some tea. I'm just drinking tea. You love the contrast between the two angels. Can't wait to see the tutorial. Oh, thank you. Mankind Gaming. Okay, I gave you a shout out. <laughs> thank you, Jamie. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys. Well, I, I wrapped up short. Do you guys have anything you want to discuss? Did anybody do um, Black Friday shopping? Did you guys get anything good Black Friday shopping? I just shopped online. I didn't go out into any stores. My husband went to um, Lowe's to pick up something that I ordered online. But that was the extent of my Black Friday shopping. I didn't shop. Did anybody go out into the elements? Thank you, Pam. No? I wanna get, um, I'm pretty much done. I think I need to get, I need to get my father-in-law something, which he never wants you to get him anything. So usually I try for something personal with him, like a personal gift with the kids. Um, and I need to get, um, I'm pretty much done. My father-in-law, I need to get him and I just finished my brother. I did all my nieces. I'm pretty much done. You stayed home, Helen? Yeah. I went online to compare prices and that was it. Yeah. Mario didn't do anything. Tips on quick crafty gifts. Is that what you want me to do or you want me to suggest that now? Be you for you. I love your channel name, by the way. You got some bikes. That's a smart idea. Thank you for all the information. I will be a, you will be a, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty much done. I did a little today, yesterday was Cyber Monday. I did very late night. I was like around 11.30, right before the end of Cyber Monday, I went on to um, Bath and Body Works or Bed Bath and, 
Bath and Body Works, they had the little candles, the single wick candles. And my daughter and my son both love candles. And they were on sale for $6.50. So I got a couple of those. I want a mask beanie combo, but the mask is in the shape of a beard. Okay. <laughs> a mask beanie combo. So basically you want the mask to connect to the beanie and then you want the beard on the mask. That's what you're telling me, right? Okay. Uh, yes, I would like to know some quick gift ideals to make for Christmas. Um, you can make, you know, the head headbands are super quick. Make a few of them. Because, you know, when you give things in sets, they look more expensive. So, you know, whip up maybe like two or three and put them in a nice little box. Those are cool. Um, you can do um, earrings. Crochet earrings are always pretty a scarf and mitten set would be really pretty. Just get you some ma matching, um, like coordinating yarn or matching glove yarn. I have tutorials on my channel for the most recent video I did was for some mittens and then, but they have a coordinating wrap, head wrap to go with them. I will be putting out a video on some more headbands. I think beanies and scarves are always a good combination that work up pretty quickly. Um, I've seen that on YouTube, Mario. Okay, cool. I know what you want. <laughs> um, applying it to my daily task. Okay. Can you make a video on how to knit a Christmas gift? Jane, I want to do that, but that, I don't know that I can't, I don't know that I can, honestly. I don't know that I would have the time to make a whole skirt. I don't know if I got, I don't know if I told you guys that or not. I don't crochet super fast. I crochet, um, I would say I'm a moderate crocheter and not because I probably couldn't go faster, but I just don't stay focused long enough, unfortunately. So I'm sorry. Maybe I can make one, but it would definitely not be for Christmas. Okay, I hear you. That's what you want. Me, yeah, beanies with far, with the fur pom-poms like these would be perfect gifts. They always look really nice. It's on trend. Um, oh, also, if you wanted to make like, um, you know, like the, um, for your boots, you have like the little cuffs that go around boots. Those are really quick and easy to make. I made these little... Um, key ring like you know like the wristlets for your keys i made these this is a tutorial that will be coming out um this week or next week not it's a quick one and if you guys saw my tutorial on how to use a um lucid or lucet i use a lucid to create these super simple easy gifts um this one i attached some little crochet hooks to them that i got from amazon so um I'm trying to think other things that people are creating and what I've created. Um, cozies for, you can get somebody, have you ever made like the little cozies that go around the cup? So you can go get the little cups and then put the cozies with it. Maybe put some hot chocolate in there. Um, anyway, I have, a, I mean, there's a ton. You can even do like wine bottle, um, crochet wine bottle bags and then put the wine bottle in the inside. Thank you very much. I especially like the dishcloths. Oh yeah, dishcloths. Can't go wrong with that. Dishcloths and some candles, make it a whole gift. Is this a live talk right now? Yeah, hi Kyle, I'm here. Yep, we're here right now. Scrunchies, who just said that? Yeah, BU for scrunchies are super fast. I have a tutorial on my channel for that as well. And it really, I think I, there's a ton of tutorials on scrunchies. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> well, yeah, so there's a lot, guys. There's a lot of things out there um, that we can do. And I'll be doing, that's what I'll do. You know what? Be you for you. I think that's going to be my next Monday's um, My Favorite Things thing. I didn't do one yesterday. I didn't get to it yesterday because I was really trying to get some things done for today, but that will be my next Monday's video. I'll do like five or six, maybe 10, 10 Christmas ideals. That's a good one. Okay. I'll do that. I'll do that.
Head wrap. Okay, that's a good idea. Ooh, I want a mask holder that you can wear around your wrist, like a pocket wristband. Okay, Mario, you want a lot, huh? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Let's see about that. I think I'm going to get you a hook and then you can follow some of my tutorials. Yeah? <laughs> yes, you have ideas. That's funny. Okay. Oh, and then be you for you also like little um footies, the socks. They just keep coming. Okay, so I'm going to put all this in a video because I don't know who all is going to stay um, to the end of the live to get all these great ideas, but I'm going to put it all in a video. <laughs> You're funny. You're funny. All right, guys. Well, I don't want to hold your time. Does anybody have anything for the good of the group or anything else going on with you? Any other giveaways? Um, if any of you guys have any channels that you want me to shout out? I know Veronica, I think we're crochet and still, still crochet and cooks. She's got a live, um, I think, scheduled after mine. So if you guys want to check her out. Is there a link to the socks and the slippers? There is a link to the socks and the slippers. I will put that link on my, where can I put that link? Hey, Logan, are you still there? Can you find my slipper pattern? Oh, I think he did it already. He's on top of it. Be you for you, that, um, I think that's the link to the slipper pattern. That's an oldie but goodie, but it still works. And I get a lot of good feedback on that one. Southern California, hello. Check you out while you, check you out while crocodile. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, guys, if you have any questions about anything, you guys, please leave them in the comments. Even after the video, I will make sure that I read those. Um, again, if you're not following me on Instagram, head over there. I'm really responsive over there. Um, and that's pretty much all I have for the day. I got five pairs of slippers. Five pairs of slippers. You should be crocheting right now, Vivi. <laughs> I'm going to be making some slippers too. I want to, I want another pattern on my channel. So I'm going to do that. Like, hi, thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate it. Um, and I hope this topic was useful. For you guys and I will be here next Tuesday yes I should be here Tuesday 10 God willing 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time we'll have another topic um, and I don't know what that's gonna be yet so if you guys have any suggestions please leave them and I will look into that I have just finished two mer Pam, I saw your mermaid tail blanket on Instagram. Oh, it's so pretty. It is so pretty. Thanks, Jan. I appreciate that. Helen, you have a wonderful day too. Nice shirt in the background. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so next Tuesday, God willing, I'll be here at the same time, 10 a.m. Eastern time, and we'll have another topic to discuss. Um, and I'm not really sure what that's going to be yet, so we shall see. Oh, giving within your means would be a good topic. Giving within your means. Giving, Angie, giving within your means, meaning like giving of your time, giving with, giving of your money. Oh, you will? Okay, I'm going to definitely, I'm going to tune in, Pam, because that was so pretty. You guys, you have to check out Pam's Crochet and Knit Corner. She does a podcast. I don't know what if she does it on specific days. I just always catch them. But um, you guys should check her out. She always has the prettiest whips, the pretty, not whips, but the prettiest finished objects, things that she's completed. Angie, are you still here? When you, when you say giving within your means, I like that, but what exactly? Okay, and then to do a thumbs up, Verna, you would either have to leave. If you're on your device, you have to click out of the chat and then do the thumbs up. But if you're on your computer, it should be right there on the screen. Whatever you can give, either time or money, especially with a lot of people out of work this year, that is not about things. Oh, 
I think I like that. Okay. If I can talk to that comment to that, I will I will do. Let me write it down. Angie, thank you. Within your means. Time or money. All right, I like that. I'm right, I'm writing it down. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Or that it doesn't have to be about things. Okay, I like that. That was a good topic. Thank you. Working on red dishcloths for Christmas. Yes. Dishcloths are good. I think that's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> oh, it says the comments are turned off. It's probably turned off because the video is live right now. But once I post the video, Kyle, I think the comments will come on. Because right now I can read all of your comments. But once I... Once it goes through the um, YouTube studio production, then about an hour or so later, the comments usually come on. Yeah. Okay, well, that's it, guys. It's my hour. I want to stay true to my time. We did talk about time today, so I want to respect your time as well. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. I hope you get a lot accomplished, and I hope to see you all here next weekend. And share the word. I do like to have people out here with me, so if you guys want to share, that would be great. And I'll see you soon, okay? Bye. <laughs>